actually getting us a little bit into Unit 5, one of the things that you've got to be able to do as a starting point is distinguish between the four market types. Now, essentially what we're looking at here is perfect competition by itself. That's what we've been dealing with in Unit 4. And all the other three here are imperfect competition, and we lump all of those together in Unit 5. Um, they do have a lot in common, um, but when we get into the differences between some of the curves, you're going to have to practice because those can get you know, really, really different, and you do need to be able to draw them. So, thinking about how to explain this, I decided that the one way to go is to start with the product example and kind of work from there. Um, I think if we start with something a little more concrete than a little chart with all the words all over it, it uh, might make a little more sense. All right, so for perfect competition, my example is an egg. Just your average run-of-the-mill jumbo white grocery store egg. It's in a package. Doesn't tell you, you know, with individual eggs whose farm they came from. They're not, you know, branded, you know, Farmer Ted's egg here. Um, it doesn't make any difference. It's just egg. Now, what are the product characteristics? They are exactly the same. There is no discernible difference between one egg in the carton and the one next to it. They might come from two completely different farms. Nobody cares. It's egg. All right, so they are the same. In other words, homogeneous, which may or, not fit, may or may not fit in that box. Okay, look at that. All right, entry and exit. You know, in other words, how easy is it for a firm to get into this business or to shut down operations, say, I'm done, I'm getting out? What do you need to produce eggs? Go buy a chicken. Or a reptile. Okay, we're... Uh, you're complicating this now. We're talking about egg. It's a chicken egg. What came first? Probably the chicken, because otherwise, how do you know what egg it is? All right, so entry and exit. Very, very easy. Okay? Very easy. Which is part of why you have so many sellers in the market. Now, degree of market control. Farmer Ted, if he decides he's going into retirement next week, he's never going to sell another egg for the rest of his life, is that going to have any impact whatsoever in the market price? No, because there are millions of people producing egg. It's the same thing. Nobody cares. It doesn't matter. If you decide, gee, I need to cut back on my cholesterol. I'm not going to buy eggs for a year. No impact, because you are one person in millions. None. None. Zero. None. Nada. So, Zilch. Zwabo. We get it. All right. So for a perfectly competitive firm, price taker, price maker, price taker. What's the key? Same product, easy entry and exit, no price control. These two things tie together. Lots and lots of buyers and sellers. Okay. No individual has any impact whatsoever on the market. By the That's, way, we're out of eggs. Well, and yet it makes no difference to the market. The True. The market does not care. Um, you might care, but the market, they don't even notice because it's nothing. All right. So that's our starting point. Now, for all the rest of these, they are imperfect because to one degree or another, you know, all of this is not going to be true. Now, monopolistic we can do next. Monopolistic, I think the easiest way to remember this is to think about clothing. Okay? If you look at your average, everyday pair of sneakers, running shoes, tennis shoes, whatever you prefer to call them. Sneakers. Now, what are some product characteristics? Well... There are differences there, okay? Sometimes there are some appreciable differences. So it's not the same. But what if it is? What if we're talking about the exact same pair of Nikes that's on sale 
you know, at one department store, let's say we're talking about Macy's having a sale, and then you go to the other end of the mall to Lord & Taylor, and the shoe costs more money. But it's the same shoe, so how do they get you to buy one instead of the other? Well, that's where it gets a little tricky with clothes. Entry and exit. You know, how difficult is it to, you know, create a running shoe factory? There's a lot of startup costs there. There's a lot of overhead. You have to have the designs. You have to have all of your inputs. So we would say that this could be difficult. Could be somewhat hard. Could be extraordinarily difficult to do that. It just depends on exactly what the product is. Degree of market control, some. Okay? But it's all about what you can convince buyers your product is worth. Okay? So I'm going to put some here, plus. It could be very great. How do they get market control for something like running shoes? They advertise. They advertise. That's how you go from something that's not the same to, oh, wait, i got to have that one. They develop brand loyalty. If you're talking about somebody who's a serious runner, you know, they might have one brand that they always buy because they believe it's the best one. How do you get that? Okay. How do you know that you have to buy that shoe at Macy's and not at the department store on the other end of the mall? Because you saw it on TV. You read it in the, in the sales wire. Okay. So advertising for monopolistic competition is really important. But wait, we didn't talk about advertising with perfect competition. Why is Farmer Ted going to advertise egg, when it's just the same as everyone else's egg. It's the same thing. He's not going to make more money. He's going to blow it all with advertising funds. He's not He's not making anything off of it. That's why when you see like egg ads, it's always like the egg producers board. The only way they can afford to advertise it is to amalgamate all of the farmers. Nobody's going to try and brand their eggs. No, and, and that's different because what you're doing at that point is trying to pull people in from a substitute product. Um, you know, trying to boost the, the industry-wide demand, which again, might have an effect on the firm in terms of changing the price. But for the firm, the firm's still a price taker. You know, they're not going to advertise Farmer Ted's eggs because they're just exactly the same. All right. Price taker or price maker, to some degree, price maker. But it all depends on their ability to make you think that their product is better and really has no substitutes. 